Hey, what's up, guys? It's Moogle Lord here, and I'm back from my vacation, and now we're here in September. I know a lot of you guys are back in school, and my daughter, she's back in school as well. So now it's just time to get busy. Let's get some of this um, news out, and I'm more rejuvenated now that, you know, I took some time to rest from my burnout and everything. And as I promised before, we're going to cover some Black Myth Wukong um, news and the drama that was surrounding it and everything. And I will say this, when it comes to Black Myth Wukong, this gives us a perfect example of when you create a good game, fans will come out and support it, you know? And as far as the sales expectations and how it exceeded expectations, what does this mean for the game industry moving forward? And is this a rare occurrence, what we saw with the massive success that it has. Is this just a rare occurrence that we only gonna see once in a gaming generation and it would never be replicated ever again? So I wanna go through a lot of those details and just wanna hear your thoughts in the comment sections below. So before we even dive into this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell for more gaming content here on this channel. So we're gonna dive in it right now. So I know a lot of you guys may be new or don't even understand or know what's going on as far as context is concerned when it comes to why Black Myth Wukong has caused so much controversy within the gaming space and also during the culture war. And it all began back in November of last year, November 2023, when it came to an IGN journalist, yes, gaming journalist, we've been talking about it for some time here on this channel, about how I feel about gaming journalists and how they have became the virus or the bane to the gaming industry ever since uh, people like Anita Sarkeesian and Gamergate has pretty much crept this and laid its talents and claws uh, within the gaming space. But yes, it started with IGN and this particular gaming journalist goes by the name Rebecca Valentine now if you look at her picture um, It also has on her picture that she's a investigative uh, journalist and What journalists today especially in the gaming space actually do justice when it comes to investigations because a lot of this drama had blown up because of her quote-unquote investigations was essentially pretty much wrong or there was some wires that was crossed that really blew this up we all started back in 2023 where ign had pretty much uh rebecca Valentine, just to remind you um was pretty much had posted an article claiming that the company or the developer that's designing um black myth wukong um has a dark history of sexism and misogyny and all these other slanderous terms that we always been hearing and this person was going off of these translated tweets or tra translated text messages that was found on a particular website or an interview and IGN had pretty much made an article talking about it it was very extensive and this had pretty much have gotten out there and it caused a lot of controversy and in fact I covered it myself and you can go check it out because there was a lot of confusion a lot of mixed messaging going on like who's correct and who's not correct because as you can as you can see when i when we talked about it before when it came to this uh this interview or this translation many people were saying that no this is actually a mistranslation or a person who doesn't speak the native language doesn't understand the undertones or the context behind all of this so this really caused a, a, a giant uproar and then after the backlash had exploded ign had to come in and pretty much uh, clarify a few things and we'll talk about that with the with the pretty much had posted when it came to all this so what we had here was uh, from um, IGN there was an article um, that was posted by Rebecca Valentine so we fast forward to 2024 IGN come in to try to clean up all this so IGN said we published a comprehensive report on IGN be telling a number of sexist and inappropriate remarks made by multiple developers of Black Myth Wukong including those in leadership roles at Game Science as of the publication of this preview Game Science has yet to provide any response or statement addressing our reports or their past remarks like Mitchell, I had the opportunity to see Black Myth Wukong at Summer Game Fest. Though my appointment was admittedly a little strange, I was told as part of my invitation that Game Science would have a statement related to the reports of sexism. I arrived at the point of at the appointment and saw the game as planned. But when I asked for the promised statement, I was told by the PR representative, Game Science is focused on the demo during play days and will only answer questions related to gameplay. See, the 
thing is, Game Science even knew to himself that IGN was full of shit. You know what I'm saying? IGN, uh, when it comes to Game Science themselves with Black Men Wukong, Kong, they're about their game. They want people to get their hands on the game and play the game. That's their job. The journalist's job was to come down, gaming journalists, they're gaming journalists. Their job was to come down, to try out the demo, play the game, and then let gamers know whether or not the demo is any good, if the game is any good. Anything else is loud noise, and especially when the, the translation of the tweets or the messages was mistranslated, and they already knew that this is trying to spark some type of controversy. And Game Science knew that as long as you ignore these journalists and just keep providing the experience that gamers want, then look at the success that it has now. So moving forward, Mitchell's preview did, um, does, doesn't need my validation, but for what it's worth, I fully back everything he's written here. Black Myth Wukong looks like it's going to be a great game, and that's what should matter. Is it rather not that the game that Game Science is producing and creating and developing, rather or not if it's a good gaming experience. That's all this is about. And despite this rumors or information about the sexism and stuff, even the IGN journalists themselves said that, yo, this game is fucking awesome. This is a good game. And that's what it's supposed to be about. Uh, be about. It says, with snappy combat, fantastic monster design, and some really interesting boss fights. It's also true that several of the people who are making it have made disparaging remarks about women and don't seem to be interested in either, either in retracting their past statements. And that's another thing that's important. Even if it is true or whatever remarks that they made or whatever like that, it's their past, it's past statements. And they don't owe nobody anything. And I think the best way to fight in combat against a lot of this nonsense and where a lot of these companies and developers fail, they always give these people an inch. And when they give them an inch, these people take a mile. And when they bend the knee, they just take it on. And then now you now they underneath all this controversy and everything. And look at the controversy and how it's blowing up and look at the success of Black Myth Wukong right now. See, not listening to them and not bending the knee, they came out successful. And they had in their heads that, yo, like, we're not going to give you what you guys want. Yeah, we're about this game and we're only going to focus on this game. So that's what it says, Black Myth Wukong purely for expressing their discomfort with those statements. Both of these ideas can exist simultaneously. What audience want to uh, um, want to do about this conflict is ultimately their choice. Yes, leave the choice to the gamers of what they want to do and how they decide they want to spend their money. One last note, I didn't see any women or film, um, uh, film coded characters in the demo and I was able to confirm from game science that there were there were none present in the section of the game Presented to the press there will be women in the final game But for now it is impossible to really comment on whether or not game science developers express beliefs uh, pre-made um, bl uh, Black myth Wukong in a meaningful way and this is the thing I'm talking about and then they weren't about female representation and everything like, like it, it, this this what boggles my mind and game science seen right through this shit they deflected they ignored and said here view the game test out the game we brought you here to test out the game play the game let us know if the game is good and that's what they did and they dodged they dodged all that that's how you do it swiftly and clean so of course after all that was said and done ign took no accountability whatsoever Rebecca took no accountability whatsoever. And this is the thing that I want to tell you guys when it comes to this entire situation, when it comes to gaming journalists, when it comes to these political activists that's in this in this industry, their job is to be wrong. Their their job is to misinform. That's what it, that's what it's all about. See what, what Rebecca has done, she done what she was hired to do. She she done what she was supposed to do was to disparage, was to pretty much uh, throw shade at game science because the game wasn't to what they want as far as diversity and inclusion. And we talked about it in my, pre in my video related to this whole situation with IGN. And a lot of these game journalists expect game science to have diversity. But the thing about Wukong itself the game itself is diverse it's from a whole entirely different culture it, it, as far as the myth uh, the mythological um essence behind it and the chinese culture that's behind this game the game itself is diverse but they want it's not the diverse that these journalists want and that's where the problem is and that's what pissed them off 
So what better way to try to hurt this game is to try to smear it, misinform the audience in order to give it bad press, but it actually end up doing the reverse. And then of course, the good thing about it is now China had to step in. The Chinese community, the gaming community had to step in because as I said before, they were talking about the lack of female representation and how the, chi the these uh, these Chinese developers think of women. And then there was a bunch of Chinese video game uh, uh, content creators or gamers that was in this space who pretty much left their thoughts and opinions defending game science and attacking these journalists, more specifically Rebecca and IGN themselves. So this YouTuber, Chinese female YouTuber, goes by the name um, Feifi, and she gives you a whole backstory about her as a gamer and um, what how Black Myth um, resonates with her as a female gamer and everything like that. See, we don't need a female players was written in this contest. The developers weren't saying they didn't need female players, but that they didn't need to do things to pander to women and then treat them as a resource to attract men who wanted to date. Of course, I'm not defending them. I don't think they are misogynistic. This article clearly reflects the male perspective creative environment I mentioned. Where crudeness is seen as a humor and offensiveness is considered art, Although being interpreted as a self-mockery, although the intention was to express a desire not to cater to anyone, male or female or other groups, the way it was said made people uncomfortable, leading to a series of misunderstandings. I'm not someone who engages in gender conflicts. While I don't like this behavior, I don't think it's a big deal. That needs to limit their creativity and expression. So I'll also post that in the link in the description below. But she also gave her thoughts and opinion and threw shade right back to them defending game science, which I think is pretty cool. Because the best way to fight all this nonsense too, we need enough women who are also part of this space, who are actual actual gamers who actually give a shit about the games give a shit about the culture of gaming and not just faking being gamers actual female gamers to actually come out and we talked about this even with stellar blade we need more female gamers to come out to, to talk and speak against this nonsense because a lot of this would go away if a lot of other female gamers would come out and speak up against this because as far as we are concerned as men no matter what we say it's going to come off they, they see that sexes misogynist incels we're, we're going to be throwing so many different buzzwords and titles and stuff like that to the point where our voice um will always be sh uh, uh never be heard but if more women come out and speak against this a lot of this will go away it definitely will and the same thing with people of color when it comes to situations when it that surrounds people of color more people of color need to come out like me to come out and speak against a lot of this stuff too to quell and destroy a lot of these false narratives within this space. So they definitely did a good job. Uh, uh, Faith, uh, Faithy had definitely done a good job um, dispelling a lot of those notions and everything. And the crazy part about it is, Rebecca, after the success of the game and after the game has blown up, Rebecca has pretty much wiped out her social media. She disappeared. As far as I'm concerned, when this video releases, this is at this moment, she's not on the platform right now as I'm recording this video. But after all that was said and done, she disappeared off the platform. No accountability, no punishment for her recklessness. And as I said before, it's her job to fuck up and misinform and make those mistakes. She's hired to do that. No, she was hired specifically. This is what these journalists, these activist journalists are hired to do. They're hired specifically to go out here and misinform. They go out here to throw and throw shade and smear on a lot of these game industry game companies within the game industry so they can bend to their will. And that's how it all works. So she leaves the platform and she receives no punishment or anything like that. And all she's gonna do, as I said before, all she's gonna do is fail upwards. That's all that's gonna happen. They're gonna just fail upwards. That that's it's all that's it's designed this way. So, what about the success of Black Myth Wukong because my guy, once the game came out, it I woke up and seen you know many people t posting about it, giving their reviews, giving their opinions. Everybody is enjoying the gameplay and, and everything like that. And then to find out when uh, we talked about this, where Black Myth Wukong the sales like shattering, like, like, like it's just just surprising to see 
Black Myth Wukong, units, uh, 10 million units sold across all platform, 3 million concurrent players across all platform. Thanks to all players for your support and love. Have a great gaming weekend. And I'll, all I would say is that this was well deserved. And what I like about what, what Game Science has done, as I said before, they just avoided any of the controversy. They said, you know what, let these journalists just yap their mouths, say what they got to say or whatever like that. It's because we got a game to make. We have a vision and we want to put it out there. And they reap the benefits of it. Now, despite the success of it, there's also a lot of, there's also some coping going on, some, some controversy going on that we'll also get into. But... It, for this game's release and its success, this was also a cultural uh, significance for the Chinese culture and China in general, especially in the gaming industry that's in China. You know, um, the gaming industry it, have always been trying to penetrate China because China has a huge uh, population there. So, but the thing is, there's always a lot of roadblocks as far as their, their laws, their regulations, and everything. But the fact is that China is now becoming more of a force within the gaming industry especially now they're, they're actually doing more in the console space and stuff like that this was definitely a high point for them and the chinese culture and the chinese citizens and the gamers themselves are very proud about this game because this game represents their mythology and they want their culture to be able to be recognized from all over the world and everything and as I said before, a lot of fans, they're 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 raving, they're happy about it, they're posting up memes about it, and everybody love it. And especially when it comes to the culture war space, this has become a tool, this has become a weapon for a lot of the culture war, you know, advocates that's out there, or the anti-woke and the woke side, especially on the anti-woke side, they you know, they're pointing out that look, when you create a good game, this is what happened. You give the fans what they want, and also the female characters, because there's been talks that there was an lack of female representation and the culture war people show right up to show these female characters and what's so crazy about it is look at the female characters it seemed like that china the, the east chinese studios korean studios and japanese studios knows what they're doing when it comes to developing or designing beautiful women and they show the actual actresses um that plays as these characters in black myth wukong and they're gorgeous super gorgeous and you can see almost the one-to-one -to, -one to the actual model and of course it's a fantasy setting so you have to dial them up but these are still beautiful and attractive women compared to what we've seen in the west especially with star wars outlaws we'll get into that in a separate video or whatever but you can see the love and care and this is what gamers want they want femininity back they want the beauty they want beautiful characters um hyper feminized characters hyper masculine characters they want a lot of these things in their fantasy because it's fantasy you know, so that's the thing that really hit it with fans. And of course, on top of the gameplay, everybody's talking about the gameplay more than anything, you know, but now this is where the coping comes in because there's a lot, there's some people who's also trying to discredit or try to downplay its success because there's a lot of people that also talks about that. Well, most of the player base or most of the money's coming from China, but that's not true, you know, because if you think about it, a lot of sales for a lot of games come from China. Think about it. A lot of these games, because a lot of these markets try to appease or try to penetrate China. So you can apply that same knowledge or that same logic to all games that goes over to China and everything. But no, it says all platforms, all demographics of people, especially here in the West too, where it ranked really, really high on the charts as well, where people went out there and actually supported the game. Because this is a highly anticipated game. People was waiting for this game to release. We waited for some time, for a couple years. I remember when this game was first launched and I was like, yo, what the hell is this? I didn't even think the game was real because the game looked too good to, to be true. Because of how, look at the visuals, look at how it moves, the gameplay and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, this is truly a next gen experience. Like, you know, compared to a lot of games that we see on this current gen, this game actually looks really, really good. And for all the years of, you know, seeing a little bit of news sprinkled here and there, I didn't think this game was ever going to come out, you know? But yes, there's a lot of discourse going back and forth in terms of that. So, what now? What now? How would the gaming industry respond to Black Mist uh, uh, Wukong's success? And that's the question that we should be asking. What are these developers? What is these? What are these executives themselves are now saying? What are they doing behind closed doors? They see that this game has sold 
10 million copies within a short period of time. What, within three days? They sold that many. That many that they sold, they made so much damn money. So what are these executives gonna do moving forward? Because you look at Black Myth Wukong, you know, they, their game is not only fun, but they allow none of the wokeness to be in the game. There's no wokeness, crazy wokeness in this game. And in fact, their rules, if you was a streamer and wanted to stream the game, you could not talk about feminism. You know, you couldn't talk about pro any type of feminist propaganda or anything that's political, you know, as far as the culture war is concerned while streaming this game. They weren't playing that. So what what's going to happen now moving forward? Is this going to influence the gaming industry moving forward within the next decade of how they approach games? Will we start to see a reset? Will developers start realizing that, yo, maybe this DEI or this diversity inclusion and everything, maybe you need to dial back on this. Maybe you need to get away from these consulting companies like Sweet Baby Inc. or Black Girl Gamers and many of these other consulting groups. Maybe we should back away from all this. Maybe we should get back Get back to the roots of what gaming is, which is fun, deliver fun, and not preaching down to our audience and 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 going back and forth with them and and slandering them and everything. Maybe we should get back to the root of everything. Just pure fun, great character designs, worlds, aesthetics, everything. Let's just get back to that instead of trying to deliver a political message to our audience. You know, so that's why I'm. Th so how would they approach that? Will we see a change? Or is this Black Myth Wukong success just a rare occurrence that it would never be able to be uh, replicated and a lot of these students will still just double down on DEI and still try to push a lot of these political narratives within their within the gaming industry. So, so you also you have to recognize what you're celebrating here because there's some people that's just celebrating China itself. You know, China's the best, China's this, that, and the third, and everything like that. I say, like, wait a minute, China's the same, is the same government, the Chinese government's the same ones that push this, a lot of this stuff too. Not just BlackRock and everything, but the CCP themselves have pushed a lot of this stuff on our country and on our society and everything, but made sure to put a shield over their, uh, over their society to make sure they don't get the backlash from it. So you also got to keep that in mind, but that pretty much just wraps everything up in this whole entire situation. Um, Black Myth Wukong is a massive success. People enjoy it, people love the game, and it's good to see the success. And I'm just interested to see how the gaming industry is gonna move forward after seeing the success such as Black Myth Wukong. We start to see a shift, we start to see a change within the gaming industry. So I definitely wanna hear your thoughts in the comment sections below. So what do you think is gonna to happen to Rebecca Valentine, the journalist in the IGN? Do you think she's gonna receive any repercussions or is she gonna just elevate up into positions after doing that? Cause she did a job well done by throwing that shade out there, but obviously it didn't work. But I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Are you playing the game right now? What are your thoughts on it? Are you having fun? Definitely want to know. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe button for more gaming content here on this channel. This is Moogan Lord, signing off. I'll see you game fiends later. Peace out.